Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wake and Missoula. I'm your host, Scott, and that was Josh on the piano over there. Yeah. I'm going to keep calling it piano. I don't care what people no, think. That's okay. Yeah. So how are you doing this morning? Uh, I'm tired. Yeah, I'm pretty tired, too. Uh, apparently, tonight's supposed to be like a pink moon. Oh. Last couple nights, the moon has been like really bright, and it's like been perfectly angled at the opening of my window. You know, like you yeah. have the blinds go down, but then there's like one opening, and that one opening is where I have that moon. It's been shining the last couple of nights. Dude, I wish our, our apartment, like, our only windows are just facing directly away from uh, everything. And don't you have, like, Somehow. a whole bunch of trees, too, just kind of blocking, too? Yeah. It's not a great placement, but I could just, like, go outside, I guess. Yeah, but you're going to be moving soon. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Found a place that's a good proposition. I just got to get there before the other people do, you know? Right. That's the trick. Yep, because people already live there. Yeah, usually if you if you find a place that's like about to be rented, um, there's already somebody looking. Cool. And speaking of rent, um, later on the show, I'm going to be talking about an event that's coming up on Saturday. That's tomorrow, and it's going to be talking about renters and education about renting in Missoula. So it's through Homeward. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show during my event segment. All right, should we talk a little bit about what, what, about weather? We got, we got a little bit of a lieutenant rain coming out um, today as well with a 40% chance of rain. Uh, tonight, it's going to be 90% chance of rain with a 60% chance on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, it's going to be mostly partly sunny, partly cloudy. I don't know how it could be partly sunny. I don't know that some of those words kind of don't make any sense, but it's going to be partly cloudy, mostly sunny uh, by Monday with highs into the 60 degrees. But apparently today, we're going to have a high of 70 degree temperature. The, which would be the first 70 degree uh, tip off of the new year. So great, w good, Und yeah. awesome, perfect. I, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it'll some, be good. Some nice warm weather. I already got my flip flops ready, so yeah. yeah. It's gonna be a nice, a nice summer. Yep, so uh, apparently uh, the big news that's happening in the news today, news, news. I like. Uh, is the whole Mueller report deal. But it's not necessarily about uh, the Russians, oh. it has everything to do with the uh, obstruction of justice. It's basically kind of like when um, someone thinks that they're going to get into trouble, but then does things to uh, make it seem like they're actually in trouble. So this yeah. was like obstruction of justice because Trump fired the person before Robert Mueller during the, uh, during a, uh, investig the same investigation. So Robert Mueller's investigation report came out yesterday. And what does that mean exactly? There is evidence to support an impeachment on Trump on obstruction of justice if they pursue in the Dem-controlled House. Um, Attorney General Bill Barr said on Thursday, um, who is in part of Trump's aides, is Trump had no corrupt motives, and that's what prompted him to decide not to pr uh, prosecute the president for obstructions. Later on the day, uh, many reported that the Trump wasn't quoting from the Mueller report, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm effed. And that was like the biggest kind of like um, quote that's been be kind of thrown around in the news stations as well. If you check it out online anywhere, because that's... He a, really said that, right? Yeah. In the report, wow. uh, when... So that's what uh, Mueller reported. Um, many items were redacted, but in the 448-page two-volume report was released. It told more nuanced and some damning story about the president's role um, and the Trump campaign's interactions with Russia's, Russians, and it's putting Democrats in a bind on what to do next and whether to push forward with possibility uh, with the possibility of impeachment. So Mueller is not going to be pursuing charges. He just did the report and just like, hey, what you guys do with this is up to you. Yeah. Uh, the report concluded that no one on the campaign conspired or coordinated with Russians, but it found numerous links and the campaign expected it would benefit from the Russian efforts. But That's interesting. It has nothing to do with the Russian. It was yeah. it's basically kind of like reactions to it and also just kind of like the... Uh, the disconnected um, kind of deal. Kind of like it's just like, you know, like, I don't work with the Russians, but look at the evidence. Kind of like that kind of deal. Yeah, I'm more interested in like what would happen if an impeachment took place. Yeah, because like it, it, the, the whole process itself is going to take just it. as long, if not longer. Yeah, he's already gotten away with four years of that. Like if it turns out that something's up, yeah. he's already made it away with four years. What will be more interesting is uh, how the uh, next election goes. Yeah. Because then they'd have to pick a new, uh, like, forerunner. I mean, know? it really depends. Are the Republicans going to uh, stay with Trump? 
for the next election, or are they going to like basically? <laughs> Not if he's impeached. It, exactly. It's it's yeah. a very interesting, uh, precarious situation that Republicans are in, and either what are they going to do? Are they going to back him up and try to help him, or are they going to like just kind of like like turn coat? Honestly, they're probably getting ready like to um, save face. They're they're probably getting ready to save face, and also getting together a new candidate that they want to like back up. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I mean, Looking because you know, regardless of what happens to Trump, it, it's still going to be a Republican presidency, and Mike Pence will be basically taking over for Trump. Yikes! And um, he's yeah. very distanced himself in, in terms of Trump. He's kind of done his own thing. Yeah. Like I have not seen any kind of Mike Pence, Donald Trump kind of interactions as much since they were reelected. I think he's afraid to be around dudes. <laughs> All right, that was a little <laughs> too biased right there, but let's uh, let's throw it to something completely different. Um, we're going to talk about some local news. MCPS uh, uh, basically hired a new superintendent at the school just last night. Uh, MCAT was live streaming the uh, interviews and then the official uh, meeting that happened last night at 8 p.m. And they took little to no time deciding that Robert... Um, Watson, who worked out of MCPS for a while, he got a job, an admin job in Bozeman, and then came back to do an interview, and he will be doing, he'll be the next superintendent starting sometime in June, um, June, early June, and by June 20th, Mark Thane will be uh, retired from working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I had to add that from working yeah, deal. From, it's from kind of, it's kind of implied, yeah. but yeah. But another thing that happened at, at the university, the University of Montana student may face criminal charges and disciplinary action following a UM investigation into a gunshot from a dorm window. So somebody, a student brought a gun on campus, and the campus has a very, the campus has a very strict no gun policy um, yeah. on campus. So a Thursday news release statement, a student brought a firearm to Abra Hall and fired it out of a room window. No damage uh, beyond the tear in the window screen. Uh, were round pierced, uh, was immediately included into the report. The student's name was not immediately released. The university has uh, had an issue with a shotgun, w which was in the back, back of a car, uh, vehicle a couple years back, but thus far no one has been hurt with gun-related incidents. So it's just like some kid had a handgun on camera? Brought a gun to their dorm room and shot it off. What an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, I mean... That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about what's <laughs> happening in the state. Like, it's, what, what what, else, how can you react yeah. to that? It's like, what else it's, can you say besides, like, it's like, what a fool. What a fool. Anyways, uh, in state news, after a two-decade-long push, professional firefighters in Montana will be protected under the Firefighters' Health and Safety Bill. Uh, firefighters have been well-funded. Much of the money goes to pensions and retirement. Uh, apparently, a lot of the uh, rural fire in um, Missoula, um, they've reported that 90% of the money that goes to the uh, firefighters are for pensions and retirements. And so that 10% is unique for replacement equipment and this and that. So Government Steve Bullock uh, signed Senate Bill 160 in DeLon Thursday. In addition, he requests that Montanans fly their flags at half mast to honor those who risk their lives and health for people that they serve. So that's kind of what's happening in the state. And that's pretty much it for all your new stuff. I got new programs that are going to be airing this weekend. Here are some of the new programs. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend. So stay with us. And then he wrote in italics, it would be a blow to U.S. prestige if we did not do it first. In 1955, Von Braun's team elaborated on the Redstone to devise rockets capable of the higher speeds necessary for intermediate range ballistic missiles, the resulting, whoops, we, let's see if we can get that. That's not it, that's not it, there we go. The resulting um, rocket was the Jupiter. Um, the Jupiter was basically a redstone rocket with two additional stages. And with the approach of the International Geophysical Year, uh, the American government all of a sudden showed renewed interest in space flight and missile programs. and. On July 28, 1955, Jim Haggerty, Eisenhower's press secretary, announced that America planned to launch a, a space satellite. Oh, 1935? 1935. Where does the time go? Where does the time go? Sometimes I wonder if I'll have enough time to get everything done that I want to in this life. Does that ever happen to you? You just think you might run out of time before before you get everything done that you want to. And, well, 1935, things have changed a lot. Charlie's, Charlie's been gone for nine years now. 
I miss him every day still. And this summer, this summer, Will Rogers, Will Rogers died. And oh, if you know him, now he was a storyteller, a philosopher, and a good friend of Charlie's. But there's always a bit of that perfectionism and be all you can be. That was the motto when I joined the military. Yeah. Military parents is another great question. So military culture. Let's, so when we're talking about military culture, obviously, um, you know, these are the definitions that anthropologists and sociologists and others use. But it's really this set of ideas, this set of values that you, that you develop over your life, whatever culture you belong to. What I wanted to do tonight was kind of walk you through Special Olympics. You know, everybody knows what Special Olympics is. It has a lot of name recognition. But most people know it as a sports organization. And what I want to do is kind of walk you through how it began and how it transitioned from a sports organization to a public health organization because that really is becoming our focus now beyond the level of sports is inclusive health. And so that's what we're going to do today is kind of walk through that. I also would prefer not to stand up here and just blab. So if you have questions or thoughts or comments as we're going along, please feel free to ask them and interrupt me. So um, our real goal now is trying to get inclusive and equitable health and wellness for people with it. Uh, but really define ways to encourage people to vocally advocate for river protection. And it turns out that this is a really hard thing to do. Uh, for instance, many of us in this room probably have causes that we personally care about, are worried about, and would love to find ways to help make the world a better place, but uh, I don't know about you, but even me, this is my job and it's what I do, and even I find it hard to find the time to send an email or share a story or write a letter to a congressman or pick up the phone and call. And so um, a lot of what I try to do is figure out an attempt to implement <coughs> communication solutions uh, that'll get people, inspire people, to take those kinds of actions. Hey guys, it's a, it's time for a breakthrough. We're doing some pre-critic time. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kicking things off for you guys is a movie. Uh, last week we talked about hell. This week we're going to talk about the Jesus. Uh, okay, don't pull back. That's this, the this, opposite. I know, I know, I know. But <laughs> also praise him and stuff uh, as we get <laughs> a movie that talks takes advantage of Christians in this movie about a boy who falls through ice and only God can save him from teenage angst and you know be, being in a coma. Did I did I mention the coma? Yeah. Okay, anyways, this know. is basically a watch this cra cash grab or go to hell. Yeah, <laughs> That's basically. It's, it's one of those holiday family movies for, yeah. for the for Easter Sunday. Family, you know, for, for Easter. Yeah, for Easter. Uh, my main problem with it, as I told you, was just that they, they showed the entire movie. Yeah, they totally in did. In the trailer. They totally did. It was a long trailer. It was a really long trailer. They basically trailer. Like, explained the kid's backstory, showed how he went into a coma, Showed his mom praying for him to not be dead and then showing him not being dead. And that's it. There you go. And speaking of uh, another kid's uh, fearing the dead, this is the curse of La Llorona. Uh, get your Coronas uh, because it rhymes with Llorona. Um, MCAT does not advocate the consumption of alcohol. But if you must, don't drive. Uh, anyways, a Spanish family gets haunted uh, by a weeping ghost lady in search for children. That Can we not? pretty typical. Can we that, just not? That just sounds like uh, some folklore that they pulled out of a book, and they are like, money. Boom. I see money in that book. Well, it's like uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. But anyways, um, I understand that I, some people don't like, uh, don't like kids, and a lot of movies don't like kids. Have you ever seen a movie where the kids are, like, fine? Can't they just bring them, like, the Goosebumps TV show back? Yeah. Oh, of course. So a couple of these movies are treating kids like morons. Anyways, watch a movie where they think the ghost is right there, only to be right there. And then... And then... Right in front of you. And then it's like... For a cheap scare. And then, boom, penguins. All right, moving on. Disney cares about the environment. Good job. 
This movie follows penguins and such in a, documentary, in a documentary about Disney making themselves look good in a series of documentaries that follow their nature movies. Documentaries are education, hide your kids, we can't let them get smarter than us. Um, America was founded on watch mind-numbing content, so don't watch this movie, uh, because you might learn something. For some reason, I, I don't uh, quite trust Disney in the wild yet. Because Disney they, nature. It's Disney nature. You, you, you can't say anything else. They're, they'll they call you. They probably bought those penguins because they, they buy everything. It's like, it's like saying Fort Missoula. You're not supposed to say Fort Missoula. You're supposed to say Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. Mm, okay. Okay. Those people who buy everything. Those people? The, the, the <laughs> company that buys every property in known existence. Yeah. Is now yeah, and they I mean they are able to do it because they have uh, showrunners for each of their departments. They have Kathleen Kennedy for Star Wars. They have yeah. Kevin Feige with Marvel. But above them is this be Disney. Yeah, they control them, but they control what Marvel does. So puppet hands, man. <laughs> yeah, but it's like there's no like Disney can't say this is a Disney movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's how well, the, that's how Disney can own movie. everything, and not kind of like what happened with Rockefeller back in the day. Is here? Here's another history lesson. Just like Rockefeller had, you know, uh, oil, uh, steel, and all that stuff, and the people were just like, "Hey, you can only have one company." I'm just like, "Okay," and that's what prompted Anne Ryan to make Atlas Shrugged, and you know that kind of like you know government's interaction with uh, companies basically becoming a monopoly and yeah. basically pushing out the competition. So yeah. There's just a little bit of background, so, of history of corporations, so. Yeah. I can't be mad at Disney that much, because hey. they made the Marvel movies. Yeah. I, I mean, if you want to protest Disney, just don't watch their uh, amazing movies. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch uh, Avengers uh, Endgame, that is coming out next Friday uh, in select theaters. No, in, 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 in all theaters. Aladdin. Aladdin's coming out the same weekend. Not next yeah. weekend. Right? It's going to come out in a while. I mean, like, they released the trailer, but it's not oh, going to come out for a while. Like May... 27th or something. Hey, do you uh, do you want to watch a uh, LOL uh, school flagship Friday video? Mm-hmm. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah, let's watch it. I, I do. <laughs> I, I had to think about it for a moment, but yeah, I do want to watch it. All right. So without further ado, here is Flag- it's, it is Friday, and it's Flagship Friday, and then when I come back, we're going to talk about some city uh, council stuff. I kept it fairly short, but they're going to be talking about uh, improving the uh, tourism business in the city of Missoula. So here's this, and then wait for that. <laughs> What are you doing? Do you guys have any water? I've been waiting here all day for the bucket to spill on me. I hate to break it to you, but the water turns on in the summer. (sighs) If we give her water, she's never going to leave us alone. I don't care. I just want to go to the playground. We can help you find some. Okay. Will you hurry up already? That girl is so weird and, like, disgusting. I wish we had never ran into her. She's just, oh my god, she's on my nerves. I disagree. She was really, really nice. So, yeah, right. I just want to play Fortnite. Thanks. I'm going to try to. Right? Open. Ah, sesame! Is it open? What do you think? I'm tired of helping Thank you. Stop. No. I'm tired of helping you. You've been following us and we've wasted all our playtime. All because you wanted some water. Why don't you go get a cup of your own tears? <laughs> Why do you got to be so mean? Who needs it anyway? I'll go play with Noah. You okay? I'm just thirsty. Why did you have to be so mean? You don't have to have, be lonely because you have a friend. Let's go try to turn on the water park. Yeah, let's go! All right, welcome back, guys. Let's talk about a little bit of city council. Um, I, this is from Admin Finance, and they're talking a little bit about the city do- up a resolution to improve the tourism business in the downtown area. They wanted to basically, uh, this is all about informational type stuff, so they want to expand the, uh, the umbrella that is currently 10 hotels that are under the uh, the uh, 
Missoula Tourism Business Improvement District to include some more. So they want to expand the district a little bit more and have uh, some of these properties contribute to um, bustling more people to come here. But it also it has nothing to do, as it's more to do than just hotels. So here's Marty uh, Rebine, and she reflects on the um, tourism business. Tourism Business Improvement District was created. Um, it was just us in the city of Billings, and that has expanded drastically. Um, Missoula's TBID experience is a little bit different uh, than other communities in the state of Montana. Ours is comprised um, initially, I think, of 10 hotels, correct? And uh, we've had some hotels in town that have uh, joined um, to participate in the TBID, but we are the only community or county, uh, or there are some districts are countywide that doesn't have all the hotels included in the district. And so uh, back on May or April 1st, uh, the Tourism Business Improvement District uh, dropped a petition off in my office um, from hotel, hotel and motel properties in the city to expand this district citywide and to renew it. All right, but so the whole point of this is to basically um, help improve. Uh, advertising for hotels and getting people to come to Missoula and spend money. Um, this is kind of like a, a partnership that the Missoula likes to provide um, these districts. So uh, this is a way to put options to the city tourism websites and links to encourage people to come and stay in the downtown Missoula areas, especially Missoula County. Uh, there are, you know, like since there are definitely more hotels popping up, um, maybe uh, uh, Gutterson, um, Destination Missoula, talks about grants and events um, in terms of TBID. We are the only TBID in the state of Montana now. There are 18 that is not a full TBID. So that puts us a little bit behind competitively when we compete with other cities for events um, and different sorts of things to bring them to Missoula. As you move through it, it will give you a summary of overall of our marketing. Um, you'll see a lot of the statistics that we have overall for um, our general marketing, our social media. It includes our branding campaigns that we have in place. And then you can see an overall analysis of our growth, um, both of our website and of our call center inquiries. And you can see some significant growth over the nine years. All right. So, uh, you know, tourism has definitely increased over the last couple of years. And a lot of ha that has to do with more uh, private entities in the, within the city of Missoula, not necessarily as big as the tourism department. Um, I think one anecdotal uh, information is the Osprey Field, which is kind of like through the cities, you know, trying to get people to come and that kind of deal. And they kind of uh, moved that over to uh, basically a private uh, venue like a Logjam Presents is going to be hosting the uh, events at Osprey Theater. So that's just kind of something to really think about when you um, – how tourism is in Missoula and how they wish to kind of like expand it and expand ways to come and stay in Missoula. Um, of course, you know, you can watch the whole meeting of admin finance. They have more graphs and more charts, but I just want to give you a little glimpse of what they're talking about in terms of tourism. Let's talk about community of the whole. One of the things that uh, w was going on is that students were from the university were canvassing uh, neighborhoods to ask them about, hey, is housing affordable? And what needs to happen to make housing affordable? But here's an example of affordable housing based on the, what their information. The survey question was, when the city discusses affordable housing, they define it as housing that does not cost more than 30% of your monthly income. Do you think this is a good definition? Um, and as you can see, our possible responses were yes, not sure, and no. And most folks said yes. However, um, in our canvassing responses, People had kind of caveats when they said yes. They had yes buts or concerns. And for people that answered the survey online, um, they didn't necessarily get the chance to express those kind of caveat opinions unless they said no. So, All right, so that kind of gives you a little bit of background about some of the surveys and some of the things that people have been asking. Um, Montana James, who organized the groups, talks more about people who answered no um, to some of the questions about affordable housing. Um, most of those people who said no, and as well as those who said yes, but, were very concerned about exactly where the money was going to come from for this housing fund. Um, we heard a lot of, this is okay as long as it doesn't increase my property taxes. Uh, we also talked to a lot of people who were really concerned that this money for affordable housing wouldn't be taken from other important services. Um, other residents just opposed government handouts of any kind. Um, and others, still others felt that increasing local funding wouldn't address the root problems of high costs and low wages. 
And, you know, like one of the things that, that really uh, uh, people are really concerned about is that if you are like lower middle class, you're just above the bracket to uh, um, get like SNAP programs and subsidies and uh, other uh, type deals that people who have a low income bracket, um, they're worried that they could be taxed out of their homes. Uh, most of the, pro of course, like the big thing, it's taxes. It's like, you know, you want more affordable housing, but you have to spend X amount of money and the city has to uh, put in uh, some deals with uh, um, basically um, making these complexes and whatnot to make it happen. Uh, of course, this was information only. This is just uh, uh, basically information that was gathered by university students, the online survey. You can watch the whole type of deal, and they just want to um, come up with a affordable housing policy that won't tax vulnerable residents within the city of Missoula. So you can always uh, submit surveys. You can always ask questions. You can always log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, here's Brian Von Lochberg, and this is what he had to say for the final thought. So having this input is uh, incredibly valuable, um, especially in this sort of you know, first person almost way, uh, capturing the words from these folks. Um, but uh, I'm not surprised to see what those responses were, and um, it, it is a pr good intro and in framing to the challenges uh, that we're going to take on. So, and frankly, councils long into the future will be taking on. So thanks again. Um, All right, so that was Brian Von Losberg for the final quote. And that pretty much does it for my city council report. If you're interested in finding out more about what's going on within the city, uh, they're talking about the budget committee meetings. And the budget committee meetings is going a little bit further into the numbers about how much, what is getting funding, this, this, and there. I usually don't do the budget uh, committee meetings because it's kind of dry and it's mostly just numbers. Uh, so you can check that out and more at uh, City of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. You can watch the City of Missoula's uh, meetings on channel uh, Charter, channel 190, or you can go to mcat.org. Once again, I want to uh, uh, remind you that if you want more information about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. All you got to do is use the Google to look up Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. All that fun stuff as well. I got a new art clip for you guys. This is from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and this is a show... Wait, wait hold on a second. I gotta make sure I got the right one. Uh-huh. It's the Gallery of Visual Arts, and they're doing an exhibit of arts, uh, obviously. It's the BFA, it's a Bachelor of Fine Arts exhibit that's ha happening at the Gallery of Visual Arts. So, without further ado, here's that, and Josh, do you want to play something after this? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going to do that. All right, 90 seconds. We'll be right back.
Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, so it's the uh, end of the Indian Law Week uh, speaker presentation. They're talking about Indian Law. In this particular talk, they're going to talk about Indian child, uh, the Indian Child Welfare Act, and it's by, uh, presented by Marilyn Smith, Professor Marilyn Smith, and it's going to be at the UN, the UM Law School starting now. Um, they have a whole bunch of events happening this week, as uh, this whole week about Indian affairs um, in terms of law. Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. If you're interested in having your kids uh, pick up a book and learn to read, it's the perfect place to do it. Hands-on Science, Bubble Bonanza. It's all about bubbles. Create bubble art while learning all about the science of bubbles at the Discovery Bench at Spectrum Discovery. Yarns and Watercolor. Go back to the Missoula Public Library. Make uh, your own blanket. Make your own clothes. Or you can just uh, watercolor. Starting at noon today. Facebook for newsrooms and journalists, University of Montana, the Montana Media Lab, Facebook, and the Society of Professional Journalisms, uh, Journalists uh, is offering a 90-minute free training to help newsrooms and journalists understand how to track users and follow on Facebook, um, how to use the platform in your reporting and best practices in videos and photos on Facebook. Space is limited, but it starts at 1 in this afternoon, and you can learn all about it. I believe it's going to be at the uh, Down Anderson Hall at the University of Montana. It's a uh, that one building, if you're looking at Main Hall, look to your left, you can't miss it. It's right behind that, behind Jeanette Rankin. Family fun time with the family uh, YMCA starting at 3.30 in the afternoon from 3.30 to about 5. Your family gets to enjoy some family fun time for only $22 for the whole family. Enjoy some of their uh, facilities at the YMCA. Okay. Predator feeding. It's nice place. Yeah, nice place. Missoula, uh, the predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium. Uh, they're feeding some hungry critters and you get to learn about how they consume a lot of their prey and it's very interesting depending upon a lot of different a animals uh you know like spiders you know some spiders actually suck out the juices other spiders consume their prey it's it's different ways of doing it for sure kind of like terrifying i know it's extremely terrifying i, I I'm, I'm, I'm like literally obsessed with tarantulas molting now it's it's haunting to watch but it's also really fascinating anyways <laughs> missoula insectarium you can look up more information by going to the missoula butterfly house.org Closing reception with Bentley Spang, Missouri Museum, uh, starting at 5 p.m. tonight. It's a lively reception to honor Spang's firewater exhibition. Uh, Converse with uh, uh, educator and performer artist uh, Bentley Spang, and it's free and open to the public. That's one of the things that I love about the Missouri Museum. It's always free, free admission, free expression. Grand opening party at the Florence Building. Uh, they're doing a grand opening uh, to the general public. Uh, it's uh, going to be great. They're going to have a grand opening. And this is going to be a kind of like a, a, a new business. It's going to be a new art gallery at the Florence Building. And it's going to be open Monday through Saturdays, 10 to 7, sa Sundays, 12 to 5, in interest some art. Planetarium show with uh, Nate McCready um, at, at 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. And this is at the uh, University of Montana um, Pain Center, the Native American Pain Center. And yeah, it's a planetarium show. They always have a bunch of planetarium show. It's a good way to see some of the moon, especially the moon tonight, which is going to be pink. It's a rare pink moon that's happening tonight. So it's a perfect time to check all that out. But the big thing that's happening at the university this uh, weekend as, as well is the Keo Pow Wow, one of the longest running powwows around, uh, 51st annual powwow. They've been doing it at the university's um, Don Anderson Hall for many, many years. Uh, they probably did it somewhere else before that, but I want to know. But I, all I know is they've been doing it s in the, since the 90s. Uh, the annual powwow celebration unifies all Native Americans from across the nation in an event full of dancing, singing, and sharing of stories between all in attendance. The celebration is a time to preserve the rich heritage of Native Americans and renew the thoughts of old traditions. The diversity of each tribe represented in the powwow is shown within dancing styles and traditional dress and dancers. Although, f uh, from, a, um, although from a wide for, uh, array of backgrounds, each dancer comes together to celebrate um, what they, their cur culture truly represents. Each year, the powwow continues to grow, which shows the power of the people and leaves the message that our culture will never die out. Children six and under um, are free. Seniors 65 and older are free. Drum registration, if you want to be in the drum circle, uh, there's 10 passes. It's $50 uh, dancer registration, $5 general admission, $5, uh, $5 session, or $12 for a weekend pass. So that's what's happening today and tomorrow at the uh, Dahlberg Arena. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it for your Friday events. If you guys are interested in going out and about tonight as well, um, some of you might be going clubbing or whatever. Uh, we don't have too many clubs in Missoula. I don't know. Yeah. 
Mostly bars. Yeah, just bars. People just hang out and drink. But here are some of the places you guys can go to. There's going to be um, um, Thomas Gabriel, grandson of Johnny Cash, will be playing at the Sunrise Saloon tonight oh. at uh, Sunrise Saloon. They got Neon Lights at Flying Squirrel. You got Joan Zenban at Union Club. And you got Trago at the Top Hat. It's going to be very, uh, it's a very country night, it seems like. Of course, Neon Lights is going to be a perfect opportunity for a lot of kids and young teens to bounce around um, who can't get into bars because they're not old enough. Okay. Not that I go to bars anyways because I'm old enough and I don't care to go to bars. But moving on, I don't want to talk about myself too much. <laughs> Saturday, Spring Kids Carnival at MPI Open House, Missoula uh, uh, um, Montessori plus International, celebrate spring and help families in need. This kid-friendly fundraising event for a uh, Montessori plus International School Program. Take pictures with the Easter Bunny, get your face painted, uh, construct balloon animals, enjoy organic cotton candy, participate in egg races and cakewalk, purchase goods from bake sale, learn paper folding, origami as they call it. Um, it starts tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. Winter market is also happening 9 to 1 p.m. It's not necessarily winter, but the winter market will be ongoing until uh, the farmer's market starts kicking into gear, I believe, sometime in May. So you want to look out for that. Um, and it's going to be at the Missoula Senior Center from 9 to 1, 8, 1 p.m. Home Mortgage Financial Fitness Class. I told you about this earlier. This is a financial fitness class for anybody who is renting, who wants to improve their, um, their money and what they spend. And also, it really teaches about credit. You don't know what credit is? This is the perfect place to be. They're doing a class tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, it's an all-day class, but you get a financial fitness class, and this is you get a certificate for the financial fitness class, could, which can uh, work towards a $5,000 grant in purchasing your first home. So think about it. All right, May uh, 18th is also another event they're going to be doing this, and then they're going to do another one in June 11th, 12th, and 13th from 6 to 9 p.m., at their home run offices. It's the old Equinox buildings back where, uh, where they used to have uh, Liberty Bowling. So it's on Liberty Street. That's the only <laughs> remnants of it. So, um, Yeah, springtime under, uh, underwater egg hunt. Um, Currents Aquatic Center is doing an Easter egg hunt underwater. And it's starting at 10 a.m. at Currents Aquatic Center tomorrow morning. Mm. Um, let's see, Fa uh, Saturday Family Art Workshop, Missouri Art Museum from 11 to 12.30 uh, p.m. It's free, it's an art, it's a family, comes together, uh, paints together at the Missouri Art Museum starting at 11 tomorrow. But also, hey, you guys can't forget about the MCAT Saturday drop-ins and it's happening every Saturday from one to five until Memorial Day weekend where we'll be going over to uh, MistCon, hopefully. Uh, still haven't heard back from them. You never hear back from them until like maybe the week before, who knows. Yeah, they're not very quick to respond, but yeah. hopefully. No, I guess we're just not high, powerful, high profile enough. Anyways, uh, also happening is the Scorcher Music Festival. It is basically a giant rave party at the Missoula Fairgrounds, and it's happening from noon to 10.30 p.m., all the fairgrounds. It's all just like DJ music, dancing, rave, party. Woo, great. Um, guts, girls using their strengths, summer outdoor activities, registration deadline. Uh, Summer camps, uh, they're asking, wow, this is an early deadline. It's barely getting spring, and they're already d having a deadline for summer camps. All right. But anyways, Guts offers a week-long outdoor adventures for girls, nine binary, and gender-diverse youths aged 9 to 18 in the wilderness areas surrounding Missoula. Scholarships are available for these trips to widen the access of these types of summer camp opportunities. The de deadline for registration is tomorrow. Yeah. yeah crazy you know like yeah. we usually have like summer camps here at, yeah we okay i probably should advertise them cats mcat summer camps we got animation camp one we got animation camp two we got time travelers camp and we got a zombie camp for the older kids age 14 to 18 but the other camps are age 9 to 13 there's a, a the right amount of ages for a lot of kids who want to do some stop animation or they want to make their own documentary through time travelers camp all right, moving on. Uh, 14th annual Black and White Ball. This is in part with the uh, Western Montana LGBTQ Community Center. It's the 14th annual Black and White Ball, and the theme is Strike Pose. So, you know, get your JoJo's Bizarre Adventure ready, because this year's theme is inspired from the 80s ballroom. Whoa! Whoa! Sorry, my computer just died on. No, stop it! Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're good. Did you? I don't know. That was really weird. It just started going blank on me. Okay. Anyways, um, maybe it's just a connection to the uh, the back. I I probably just should just unplug it. There we go. 
Yeah, it's probably just connection in the back because yeah. it's you know it's like sharing to the screen. You don't need to see what's on my computer anymore. I'm done showing you videos. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, black and white ball. It's going to be uh, think 80s Madonna in Vogue. It's going to be a party. It's uh, forty dollars per person, sixty dollars per couple. Um, and you know if you show up the day of, which is tomorrow, it'll be fifty dollars, fifty dollars per person. So it's a big event, and it goes to uh, um, the uh, the LGBTQ community center here in Montana. Um, Voodoo Horseshoe, I always like to uh, give a shout out to the Voodoo Horseshoe, it's one of my favorite pants because um, when I saw them with a key tar, I was like, yes. Oh, I want one of those. Right? So, so they're the band with the key tar, they're going to be playing at the Top Hat tomorrow night at 1015. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's pretty much it. There's not much going on. They have a, a walk through time at the UM Oval on Sunday starting at 10 a.m. This is just to kind of get an idea of all the trees that were planted at the University of Montana and get a little history of a lot of the variety of trees because uh, back in the day, the university took it upon themselves to plant uh, many trees from many different places. Of course, many of the trees died because they're not used to the winter weather, but still, it was a, it was a chance for uh, diversity of trees that were planted in the university in the 60s. And now, uh, the city of Missoula is dealing with a lot of the dead trees that are dying. Urban district. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. All right, is there anything you wanna say else, uh, Josh? I like trees. Cool. I enjoy I like trees, trees too. very much, especially pine trees, mainly because I grew up with them. I grew up surrounded entirely by pine trees, nice. so they kinda had the upper hand in that case. So are you gonna take a walk and learn about trees from the university? Yes, maybe. I'm not going to. Probably. Yeah. All right. So, Josh, do you, yeah. you want to wrap us up? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Because there's, you know, that's pretty um, much it for the show. Yeah. I don't know. Good weather. Good trees. Hmm? Just art. Good everywhere. golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> Just there's a lot to do, man. I'm, I'm probably going to. There's a gonna lot of things going on. Stay at home, play my synth. So. Nice. Or Smash Bros. Or Smash Bros. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they just released a new uh, update, and I'm like, yeah. cool. So I've been I'm building here. stages like crazy. Oh yeah, I gotta try out some of your stages. You they're they're not out. They're, oh no, I didn't bring my switch. I'm at work. Why would I bring my switch? Oh no, I was wondering if you. Cause I have my switch here. I was wondering if you built stages on. It. Anyways, yeah, we'll we'll play some Smash Bros. Yeah, we're not even friends on our switch accounts. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll have to change that. We're not <laughs> All right, take it away, Josh. And thanks you for joining us this morning. And for uh, Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Here's Josh Cook.